Welcome. This brief presentation is one in a series of five designed to provide you with an overview of the noteworthy changes in the latest edition of the IT Infrastructure Library, the ITIL 2011 edition. The subject of this presentation is Service Strategy. The information that follows is based upon the opinions of the author. Nothing in this presentation is intended to create, nor does it create, any enforceable rights, remedies, entitlement or obligations. The author and publisher of this presentation reserves the right to change or suspend any or all parts of this presentation. Thank you for your interest. The Service Strategy publication has undergone a complete and major technical edit. A comprehensive statement of purpose and a set of goals is now included in the introduction to this publication. There are a number of significant enhancements to the topic of financial management of IT services. Two new processes, strategy management for IT services, implied in the previous edition, and business relationship management, previously the subject of an entire publication, provide vital and detailed guidance on how to align the IT strategy with that of the business. Together, these new processes span more than 60 pages. A new chapter on governance and IT service management implementation strategies provides welcome information on the emerging ISO 38500 standard for corporate governance of IT and a number of strategies for approaching the implementation of IT service management and its processes. The ITSM implementation guidance suggests an interesting variety of modes respecting the various positions an IT organization might find itself in when considering how they approach an ITSM initiative. The ITSM discussion provides important detail and guidance on how to conduct an assessment of service management and includes what to assess and how to approach compliance-driven assessments such as required to achieve ISO 20000 certification as part of a renewed emphasis on standards. For the first time, a section is dedicated to the key inputs and outputs of the service strategy lifecycle stage, including the key concept of a service charter to authorize the activities of the subsequent service design stage. There are many more pages, another 160 plus, but a significant factor is the increased font size used for easier reading. Add to this the resizing of some figures and their placement, and perhaps as much as a third of the increase is due to improved presentation for readability. There are quite a few less figures, and a similar percentage of these are changed in minor ways, again to improve readability and retention. The statistical counts offered are of course approximate and subject to individual interpretation and opinion, so please use them as a guide. They include the introduction and service management as a practice chapters, now common across all the five core publications. In the introduction chapter, you'll find much improved descriptions of the purpose of the life cycle stage being discussed, key goals and objectives, the scope of operation, and how this stage brings value to the business. The service management as a practice chapter provides a simpler explanation of services and service management, and the key role of service strategies service portfolio. The suggested page count excludes the appendices, glossary of terms, also common across the publications, and index, numbering about 80 to 100 pages in all. Accounting for topic bleed in the initial chapters and appendices, there are some 365 plus pages of reference and study material. Within these pages are more than 110 new terms. Accepting most are not new to ITIL, being terms used in other core publications, their use within service strategy is new and therefore important to note as they carry with them additional context and integration points between strategy and other ITIL service lifecycle stages. On the topic of new terms used or introduced, this list summarizes those added and some of those removed. Significant additions and enhancements include those resulting from a major overhaul of financial management of IT services, which in effect resurrects 
many of the concepts previously found in version 2 of ITIL. We see the inclusion of accounting, budgeting and charging as fundamental principles presented as three sub-processes of financial management. For those familiar with version 2, especially those who studied at the service manager level, this will be an easy transition. We see the introduction of cost models, direct and indirect cost calculation, cost types, elements and units. These additions, enhancements, significantly improve the explanation of how customer demand directly influences the cost of service. The financial management of IT services is tied back to business fiscal decision making through the introduction of the discussion and concept of enterprise financial management. New terms such as internal and external customers and internal and external services introduce new concepts. Customer satisfaction now has its own dedicated, albeit small, section, linked to service requirements and service options. Another welcome addition is a detailed explanation in the form of an eight-step approach on how to define services. Out and no longer referenced are terms like capital item, core service package and variable cost dynamics. The confusion invited in version 3 surrounding the responsibilities of a product and service manager are now resolved. The term product manager is no longer used. The term service manager is redefined as any manager within the service provider organization. Another noteworthy exclusion for those studying for intermediate level certificates is the removal of the service portfolio bubble diagram, where interlocking circles of differing sizes were used to explain how a service progresses from strategy to possible retirement. Although not obvious at first glance, there are significant enhancements to the strategy management process diagram and explanation. The diagram is now directly related to supporting descriptions of process activities, providing a much more easily understood explanation of how strategy processes interoperate and how strategy in general operates throughout the service lifecycle. A number of diagrams present in the previous version are removed and moved, so as not to interrupt the discussion and distract the reader. With respect to the scope of strategy management of IT services, service strategy now includes a number of detailed diagrams mapping business to IT strategy. As mentioned previously, the reader is now offered step-by-step -step guidance on defining services and ensuring suitable alignment between the business and IT strategy. The service portfolio management bubble diagram has gone. Replacing it is a new process diagram for the service portfolio management process. The accompanying discussion offers multiple descriptions of how the process can be initiated, including as a result of an improvement contained within the service improvement plan. The discussion also includes a detailed explanation of how the three subsequent portfolio management major activities define, analyze and approve work, as well as providing insights into a new step, Charter, where a service charter authorizes the work of service design and service transition. A new concept of a customer agreement portfolio provides important clues about the relationship between the service portfolio and service level agreements. In the revised content for financial management of IT services, we see dramatic improvements in the description of how finances are managed within an IT organization from a service perspective, predominantly based upon the proven concepts and methods previously found in version 2 of ITIL. This is a significant update, both in terms of the concepts introduced and the level of detail provided in the form of new diagrams and commentary. For those who studied version 2 at the service manager level, it's everything you knew and more. The familiar budgeting, IT accounting and charging concepts are reintroduced as sub-processes. Linkage is provided back to enterprise financial management policies. The concept of the cost model and its various perspectives is reintroduced along with direct and indirect cost allocation theory. Along with this reintroduction is a new type of cost model a hybrid cost model. The topic of business relationship management, BRM, and the role of a business relationship manager was well documented in ITIL version 2, 
specifically in a book dedicated to the subject entitled Business Perspective, Volume 1. They are now both included in Service Strategy, a mission-critical inclusion. The BRM process is a major and important addition. It is using these methods a service provider organization ensures it understands the business requirements of the customer and is able to provide services that meet these needs. BRM begins the process of defining the criteria for customer satisfaction and service delivery success. The process discusses the concept, new, of the customer portfolio, offers a dedicated discussion on customer satisfaction and service requirements, explains how BRM interoperates with service level management, and offers a number of means by which the process can be initiated, including at the request of the customer. The relationship with service level management is complemented by detailed discussions on the relationship between BRM and many of the processes found within other life cycle stages. This section also highlights a number of mission critical outputs, including the definition of stakeholders and stakeholder communities, and the defined business outcomes they desire, both fundamental to service management success. Although there's no immediate impact to those studying for the ITIL Foundation Certificate, and presently none of the new content is included in the available sample exams, up to and including October 2011, without doubt this refreshed core publication will have a significant and important impact to those using ITIL to craft a service management initiative or study for subsequent levels of certificates. The new and enhanced content will have a significant impact to those considering the intermediate life cycle syllabus. This is emphasized, even endorsed, by comments from official sources within guidance provided to accredited training organizations regarding the syllabus. Initial analysis indicates at least an additional three hours of study to properly address the subject of service strategy principles and an additional two and a half hours study for service strategy processes. In the revised syllabus made available, the existing demand management process is moved, the study time reduced by two and a half hours. Yet the requirement remains to study the subject, so the question remains, where did this study time go? The impact is likely to be proportional to the emphasis and importance a training organisation or IT professional places in the use of ITIL. Syllabus changes apart, the service strategy publication and the role it plays in setting the scene and parameters for all subsequent ITIL service lifecycle stages means it should likely be mandatory reading prior to reading or studying any of the core lifecycle publications. So to summarise, the service strategy core publication has been the subject of a major technical and contextual edit. It now includes specific statements of purpose and goals. The financial management of IT services includes substantial enhancements and a return to much of the theory described in version 2 of ITIL. Two new processes, strategy management for IT and business relationship management are welcome additions and represent mandatory reading for those forming a service management initiative. New chapters on governance architecture and IT service management implementation strategies provide important additional guidance and a greater emphasis on how these apply to assessments and relate to international standards. The discussion on key inputs, linking us back to the business and customer communities, and outputs that direct and authorise subsequent life cycle stages, provides valuable guidance. All in all, this refurbished, refreshed core publication is a welcome addition to a professional's reference library. Thank you for your interest in this presentation.